February 24th, 3.12pm, Wright & Co. Law Offices. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to, in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I... didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for... the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings with me. Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was prosecuted Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with these, those killings, Emma? On the night prosecuted Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. Didn't see that one coming. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. Then suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. Before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then... What happened? Uh, I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I... I can still see it now. A permanent picture? I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumours about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it, Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Ema. What did you see in the instant that crime occurred? Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Ema. You've been through so much. I couldn't 
bring myself to testify about that incident. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. You must have been 14. That's understandable. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies and find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. Let's see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Ema tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. There's something that's puzzling me, Ema. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Oh, there's no mystery there. Patriarch had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective officers in the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dart case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective? I better have another talk with her. February 24th, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. L Lana. Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence? I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul, why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago, and how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about that unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today, not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I mean, we already knew that this was connected to the SL9 incident from the first day, because we found those notes and stuff. Like, we already knew this. This isn't news. <laughs> oh well, anyway. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. Couldn't be helped, Dima. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15 there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, Miss Starr, said. About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Ema. This doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. Gross. A cab! She was amazing! A 
they still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was the de deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Ema really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... To gain experience investigating crime scenes, so you could use that experience in court, right? Gant's help in this online case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police, and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes, Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office and the same investigations. They even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. I mean, his last name is Dark, what do you expect? We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Ema. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down, then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to... the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the scene, Lana. It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Ema, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Ema, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her after all her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident. That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident, just by chance. And that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. D didn't you say a little while ago that you predicted he would do this? On. <laughs> Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Amy was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant occupies by himself. The Chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the Chief's office, the site of the final SL9 murder. Kind of weird that that's the Chief's office. You would have thought it was the Deputy Chief's office, because he was the Deputy Chief at the time. But maybe he just really liked the room and kept it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we want to go there. So, uh, we have to go to... I think this one? 
February 24th, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. There's Dept. Department. I don't see Detective Gumshoe anywhere. Things seem kind of quiet around here today. You're right. Chief of Detective seems the same, though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Right. We can come back here later. February 24th, Police Department, Entrance. Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall. Never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Hey, sirrah, sirrah. You never know where life will lead you, hey, Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? Must be his peck cactus. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all are won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The, the murder weapon? You mean... That switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Darks, all right. But in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He's one of the best prosecutors around. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he? Your brother. He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the king of prosecutors? I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the assault incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right was the day of the evidence transferal. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Star was fired and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? They did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambino. I mean Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Investigation lead, Damon Gant and his second in command, Lana Sky. Wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. 
she's never been the same since she left. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Amos said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Mine is secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly... enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I'm going to be patrolling after today. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. And you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. Did he only just take the lid off his flask? Like, what has he been doing all this time? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um... February 24th, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Um, uh, thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media in tomorrow's trial. But there's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. You just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean, it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right. You can't go in there. It's off limits. <laughs> Eva. <laughs> Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. <laughs> We're going anyway, even though it's off limits. <laughs> oh my gosh, be gay, do crimes. Let's go. <laughs> February 24th, Police Department, Chief's office. Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss Bark. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. I never could remember where C was. Oh, baby. Hmm? Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He's got that paper he was reading in his desk. So, Rido, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full too with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies. Is that big picture on the wall over there? That's a picture of Lana, Neil and me. Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We should get to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. Gant team for sure to the court record. That's an important picture, uh, so it's a good thing we saw it. Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm gonna lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh. But 
this office. It was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, would you like to have a look around? Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. Seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean, like, a clue? There's got to be a way we can get inside the Chief's office. February 24th, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Say, have either, have either of you... Bleh. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> Edgeworth? No, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? It's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Detective. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumours going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now, with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey Dick, keep up the good work. Yes sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime, my treat. Yes sir. Go take me back to, the, to that joint sometime, okay Dick? Yes sir, yes sir. Seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seemed genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... when he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Gumshoe never realised Ema was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Oh yeah, I can keep talking. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just a run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? Why made him take the serial killing? Well, capitalism. Obviously. It's the same thing. <laughs> One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by just then, so we killed him too. Then when he was burying the bodies, a jockey came upon the scene and was killed as well. Finally he turned himself in. Wait, why do they need proof that he did it if he turned himself in? I'm confused. Like, he's confessed to the crime, right? 
Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness. AKA Ema. Oops. Went into it again, let's just fast forward through this. I'm just holding B to do that, by the way. There we go. Okay, so the murder weapon. Or what we believe to be the murder weapon. In any case. Uh, this one here. The one that uh, Jake said probably wasn't the murder weapon. Um, about this. Hey, is that... It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 Incident on it. No, no, it says SL9 2. As in, if SL9 is so great. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were best speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. When Dave Detective Goodman was murdered, this stolen disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it. Now I remember what the incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at this, this knife, the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet, down to the last fibre. That's pretty conclusive. Neil's the top two right for the court record. Yay! Switch by down for the court record. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. Chief's out now and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around, if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I didn't plan on getting fired because of you. <laughs> How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. And that won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh. So in other words, Jumshu is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. There is actually, but we have to go get it. Ah, uh, if we head this way... I'm gonna get to the other crime scene. February 24th, prosecutor's office, underground, parking, lot. No one's here today, not even Miss Starr. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved in court today on the day of the crime. No one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15 p.m. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. But instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. Got to find all the answers by tomorrow. Did they forget that Phoenix already proved, like, that the murder could have happened in the evidence room earlier? Because, like, that was a fairly significant part of the case in the trial earlier. We showed that 7777777 is the person who 
murdered Detective Goodman at 4.20 p.m. Blaze it. So, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, um, we want to go here. February 24th, High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. There he is. Looks like he's writing something. What are you doing here? I'm sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with rumours flying around. What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. And that's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Okay, we need to talk to Edgeworth about a couple of things. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I do can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility is the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why? Why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First last year's trial and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered... Oops. After Neil Marshall was murdered... Sorry. <laughs> wrong voice. I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that toy. That picture... Something seemed strange about it. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends. Clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gann asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes. It was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. Alright, so if we have a look at this photograph... Look at this photograph... You'll notice... You can see the award here, the King of Prosecutors Award. But it's a little bit different. Because there's a shield there, but there's also... Uh, some sort of sword or halberd or... thing at the front, like a knife as well, which is not there anymore. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Ah, I remember now. Remember what? 
That was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. Two years, that's an important amount of time. There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Is that true, by the way? Does, is that how you write contradiction in Chinese? I don't know. Me. Oh, uh, sure, everyone knows that. Why don't you tell it, though, for Ina's sake? Very well. Long ago in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Objection! Those claims contradict each other. Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard this story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless, and thus the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Oh, I see, so the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words, but it's in, in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion, even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow, thanks Mr. Edgeworth, I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? I'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, we had the Halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. I mean, obviously there's, you know, some sort of suspicious reason to do with the SL9 incident because it happened two years ago. We'll find out what it was later. I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edgeworth is sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe at the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground. <laughs> Hold on. Just let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. What? Letter of... If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says, Letter of Resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done, and no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation, I wonder if I can use it for anything. I can use it for something. Thanks, Edgeworth. Thanks for resigning. <laughs> February 24th. Prosecutor's Office, Underground Parking Lot. I don't know who this is, so I don't know what voice to use. Um, excuse me. Oh, it's you! Hello! Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star? I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. Gross. <laughs> Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, that little scene I happened to witness? The instant line of stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savoured when eaten. Miss Star's hatred towards Lana. 
It all dates back to two years ago. But don't talk to you, mister. Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though. Must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Huh? Lana? Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same thing I just did. Lana Sky. My sister? The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course, they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. It mean items our team never found would suddenly appear while other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us save Goodman were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used? Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Gant led the investigation with La lead the investigation. With Lana second in command, they should be led. <laughs> they were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that I mean his ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh yes, there were rumours about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would ever have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Mr. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief. That's right, having solved the SL9 case, his position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean... That's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how could he control Lana? I don't know. One thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last. I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. 
Okay, that's what we wanted to hear from her. We now want to go back to the police department. Specifically, we want to go back to Detective Gumshoe, who's over here. February 24th, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I've got to admire your persistency, my answer's still no. I'm not letting you into the chief's office, period. Be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. There is. We can show him this letter. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice too. But I know different now. He trusted us to take to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. Well, we can't do that if someone found out. They wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake. Alright, detective. Thank you. Come she's ID text with you swiftly in the pocket. So we're gonna uh, head over to the chief's office now that we can go there again and get some investigating done. February 24th, police department. Chief's office. Here goes, Mr. Wright. We're in. If anyone finds us now, Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. Eek! Gah! Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah, Detective Gumshoe? What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I, I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, then what's the point of giving us your ID card? Oh no. Hey, don't do that to my card. <laughs> <laughs> How'd they ever get a chance to come in here? So I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. You really do want to get fired, don't you? What if we're lucky? Now come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. Okay, so there's a couple of clues we need to find in this room. Um, look at this safe over here. It's a safe, isn't it? Safe. That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay. If you say so. Looks like a code needs to be entered in this panel to open it. A seven-digit number. I think I just might know what it is. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. You want to try my birth date? It's... I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. So yeah, um, it's a seven digit number, just like an, a detective's ID number. And we have a hunch about the a certain detective's ID number. So we're gonna try entering that number. I 
go. <laughs> you said the same thing I did. <laughs> I, I didn't know he was going to say that. That's great. Bingo. <laughs> Again. <laughs> what number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? 7777777. The final ID card number in that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean... 777777? That ID number? I think you're 17 shy this time. What do you mean this time? It was the judge talking before, it wasn't Gumshoe. <laughs> it's gonna mean one thing, that's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Let's look inside the safe. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a, a... A shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar, where have I seen this before? There's something else in here, too. What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. Do you think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh. Well, it was just a thought. Is that it? This is all that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. Piece of cloth with a handprint on it, and a broken shard from a cup. They're quite pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great. Now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's got to be something we can show the detective. Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like... a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this, though. Hey, look at the case name. Huh? SL9 incident. I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, about evidence lists. Normally they're twice as long? That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. Half-size list of evidence. List of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The Chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Evidence was added to the court record. Okay, so we need the evidence list. We also need those other two pieces of stuff that Gumshoe found, or we found in the safe that Gumshoe's holding on to. So, obviously that piece of a jar goes with these other pieces of a jar that we found earlier. Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Oh, <laughs> those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right, one of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? You mean this one, that was in the safe? Yes, that one, that was in the safe. Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. So yeah, this part's pretty easy. You just gotta turn it that way and just put it in. There we go. There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means 
Chief Gamp willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey guys, get a load of this! What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line? That's blood. I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? Unstable drop dead in the court record. Okay, so the other piece we also need is a piece of a leather jacket that happens to have a big handprint on it. So, the thing we can do with a big handprint is find out whose handprint it is. Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. Alright, go to town. Sheesh. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Uh, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about that cloth we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humour? Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then, once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I have to be told a million times. Alright, let's get this over with. Uh, I think this one's probably a good start. And blow out the candles. I gave my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? Oops, wrong voice. <laughs> that kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? It doesn't look like we'll get a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger then. I don't remember if a particular one is the one you pick here. Uh, I'll just try a couple and see how we go, I guess. better. It's not great. Hmm. I gave him my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? I don't think we'll get a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger then. Maybe it's the middle one? I can't, I can't remember. I actually don't remember having this problem before, so maybe I always picked the correct one at the beginning when I was playing this game in the previous version. Oh, that's more like it. Okay, so we gotta figure out whose print this is. Um, this, this part is a little surprising, in my opinion. Um, it's not Damon Gant. It's not Mike Meekins. It's not Jake Marshall. It's not Bruce Goodman. It's not Dick Gumshoe. Not Lana Sky. It is in the sky. Match found. No. How can this be? What are Ema's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match. Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Hey you, over here. We don't have Dark's prints. I mean, how would we match them anyway? What's going on here? Why are that, that... What are those kids' prints doing inside the Chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Uma for now. Here. Maybe you should hold on to this. That desk on the other side of the room, was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. On that day, two years ago. Does anyone 
not using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. That's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at his New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. Interesting they were allowed to, to say that he was drunk, like, or intoxicated, because in later games, they have Phoenix drink grape juice instead of wine. <laughs> So ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk? No one except Chief Gant, and the cleaning lady who's in here each morning. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah. You wouldn't be. No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. Not so fast, buddy. Huh? What is it? When someone tells you you don't worry about it, you're su supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't just let it go at that. Sorry. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think Chief Gant might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings yet. There you go, ignoring me again. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. No, that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Yeek! To Chief Gant! We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a pole. Just then I thought of a certain detective. You, you mean... me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Y yes sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, sir... Now get out. Y yes sir Are we on our way too, then? Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. N me sir? I'd like a word with you. But sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Mr. Wright! Look, pal, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The Chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it would be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why is she kept eerily silent about it all this time? Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the Chief again. Later, pal. After that, I heard from Ema. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. February 24th, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. I see, so the Chief asked Ema to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it, tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. 
not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. I needed a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get with the rest of the story. I have to admit I was more than a little per 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 perplexed at first. It was just if you did it if there was no incriminating evidence. Um, yes there was. There's quite a lot of it, that's why it's such a difficult case. There's a lot of evidence. <laughs> that's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say. So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No. I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who may I ask is the person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of. What is this person's name? It's Chief Gan. It's obviously Chief Gan. Well, Miss Sky? Mr. Wright, you are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it you're still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he's respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of, board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offences. Why is it though that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was... Me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other. Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. I mean, there's a couple of things. Uh... I just found this in a safe in the Chief's office. This jar piece, and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. As you surmised, I cannot disobey the Chief's orders, even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate in the murder of Detective Goodman. Perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered that, mur that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edgeworth's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him, so I took it out, and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. 
And that is the reason for the bandage on your right hand? Yes. It seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. Miss Star, huh? Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that, by whatever means possible. So, you hid Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right, then I called my sister. Tell her what happened to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Ama? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Ema is so confident. About Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for Jessel Nine incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He'd already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room? I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana... You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial is only one way to drive off Lana's demons. We've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago? Be continued. <sighs> you probably have a decent idea of what happened at this point. Um, maybe. You might, you might, you might not. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so next time we'll be commencing the final trial of this enormous case that's going on and on and on and being very, very long. Uh, and then after that, we get to move on to Justice for All. So look forward to that. Also look forward to the rest of this case. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye!